The world of fishing is a weird one indeed. The act of catching a creature, usually done for survival in other countries, is done for sport a lot here in America. To the point prizes and money can be won from catching the biggest fish. I personally have never fished much growing up, and the usual times I did, I caught nothing. If we did ever fish, it was at my grandma's pond, but then snakes started showing up, so we weren't allowed to fish there anymore. Even if I didn't fish a lot, I've always enjoyed fishing when it appeared in video games. I don't know what it is about devs and fishing, but I'm sure you've at least played one game that included fishing in the form of a mini game or part of the mechanics. I remember spending hours upon hours fishing a lot in the Zelda series. It was just so relaxing to throw my hook into the water and see what would take the bait. Something that I always thought about, since games love putting fishing minigames in their games, why don't we have more fishing oriented games? It seems that if we ever get a fishing game, it's a sports fishing game that's just... terrible? You don't ever really see a game be built around the idea of fishing being a huge part in the game. The closest I can think of now is Animal Crossing, but I never would say that fishing is the main point of that game. It's just kind of a side thing you can do. Well, I decided to do something that I never see be brought up that much. I want to take a dive into the world of fishing games, or games that have fishing in them to see what's all there. Meaning, we will cover games that have really neat fishing mechanics or are built around the idea of fishing. Surprisingly, there's quite a lot of games that incorporate fishing that aren't just a bass tournament game. Lots of these games will be older games, but there's a few newer games on the list. So I hope you decided to join me and cast your line into the pond of fishing and video games. If there was a company back in the day that was really pushing out fishing games, it's surprisingly none other than Sega themselves. Even having a Sonic Bobber in the Sega Bass fishing game, which by the way is still free till the 31st if you want to go get it. Um, Sega has a thing announcing how to get it, just letting you guys know. It's just really weird to see Sega try this hard, since most players who probably play Sonic aren't going to see Sonic's head in a fishing game and go, Man, I gotta try this! Sega basically proved that this was correct when Sega decided to add Big to SA1 with his fishing gameplay. This is always brought up to be the most hated part of SA1, with some people saying they couldn't even beat the game because of Big. Big was added to the game since they wanted to slow the game down for players who are quick to rush through things and have them live in the game's world and just enjoy the moment and get all deep and absorbed. Fishing works perfectly for that since you have to be patient and just admire everything around you. Clearly, Sega forgetting the people who like Sonic don't have time for patience. We're all driving 90 miles per hour in school zones. Personally, I don't mind his gameplay, and I actually really love Big a lot. I don't know, I, I find him cute, and I feel he would be a cool guy to just hang out with. I mean, the dude likes frogs, and frogs are cool, so I mean, why would he not be a cool guy to be around? The issue arises, though, when players are forced to endure this to see the main ending. If you don't have any interest in fishing, then you're shit out of luck because there's no way to get around this. You have to do it. It's really dumb to do this to players, especially when the game doesn't take any time at all to explain how the full fishing mechanics work. I feel if this was a side story you unlocked after the game ended, it would have been adored for how wacky it is. I mean, Big fights Chaos 6, and it's the dumbest fight in the game. I know for a fact people would have loved this if they weren't forced to, you know, hang out with Big. Players have said the fishing is unresponsive and it's all up to RNG when it comes to fish biting your lore. Sometimes they do, but other times they don't. If you want to know a trick, just hit down on the control stick when the fish bites. It should hook them every time. 
I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first video to give you an explanation on Big's fishing, since Sonic Team couldn't even do that themselves. Once you learn this, the fishing becomes so easy, at least when it comes to getting froggy, since it's just about holding A and letting go when the tension meter is too high. The fishing does become a bigger challenge when you're going for all the emblems since the fishes seem to trigger the tension bar way more frequently than Froggy does. There's a few good videos going into more detail on the fishing gameplay of Big that I won't cover here, but the controls really remind me of another game they made called Sega Marine Fishing. Even the music sounds very similar to SA1. The game was released in arcades and had two different machines and this has to be one of the more interesting fishing games on the Dreamcast. If you're a fan of drum and bass or jungle music, this game has a lot of it. Sadly, it gets ruined every time you catch a fish and have to listen to the generic rock sounding music. There's also that corny voice acting from the 90s here and I love it, at least when I can hear it over the music. This guy's name is Marsala, and he's great. He will always make random snippets of things going on, and he really does bring a lot of charm to this game. When I first started playing this, I didn't realize, but my controls were messed up, so the game constantly would reel in my hook for me. I did learn how to stop the hook and adjust it accordingly, but I want to state for almost two hours I played the game like this, and I still found it really fun. I did go back and fix it later on, so I did get to experience it how it was supposed to be. I wasn't really understanding how the game worked when it came to reeling fish back in, but as time went on, I got the hang of it and learned you have to keep the tension line in the middle while holding the reel button or letting go when the gauge is too high, and using your control stick to move the rod left, right, up, or down. Usually the game will tell you which way, so just do that if it shows up on the screen. If there's one thing I can really say without a doubt about this game, it's just how beautiful and aesthetically pleasing it is to look at, from the shallows to the deepest depths. It has that Dreamcast charm so well here. To see the low poly fish with these really nice detailed textures just gives me such a good feeling. I love fish, and I really love low poly fish even more. The game has three modes you can try, one being arcade mode where you have to fish and get a total weight amount from the fish you catch in a set time limit, and if there's one thing I can recommend, it's just use a cheat code to turn the time off. The game does the time thing pretty bad here, it's a real pace breaker to be stopped every minute to then let me continue like nothing ever happened. This would have been better if they took a crazy taxi approach and after the time ran out, that was it and you had to restart. While it would have made the stages harder, it would have been more rewarding if you passed them. They also could have raised the time by another minute to balance it out. With how the game is set up now, this time is just there and that's it. The other mode is free fishing where you fish with no time limit, and the last one is mission mode. This is where you take part in basically what is training missions to earn items you unlock by fishing up certain fish in the maps. They did a really weird thing where you have to play these missions to be able to unlock more items since you're limited to a certain amount so you do these missions. I don't understand why they did this, but it's just what they did. I personally don't mind these missions and they can be pretty good if you need a better way to learn the controls if the how to play video didn't help, which is only accessible by just waiting around on the title screen. That's a really dumb choice, but whatever, Sega. The biggest feature that I love and should be standard in any fishing game is the aquarium. This is a huge aquarium as well, having a bunch of different items and fish if you take the time to get them. It's also very 90s future with how the viewing area looks. I just love letting the camera move through the aquarium, showing everything off. You even get these metal fishes that look interesting. This mode even lets you play songs from the game, meaning this doubles as your sound test area. Even though there's a sound test already in the options, this one is a cooler way to do it. This game seemed to have a lot of love put into it, and I could see why Sega really wanted to push these games out to people, even if it was done very poorly. If you're also interested, there's a full prototype build of the game you can play, but from what I can tell, the differences are very small. My final thoughts on Sega Marine Fishing, I need a Marsala SA1 mod fast. I gotta play as them right now. Marsala Adventure, please. The next fishing game is probably one of the prettiest I've seen, and it's called Real Fishing, and it sets itself apart from the other games by having this weird dreamlike look to it. Having repeating textures to give it this sense of dreamy vibes while still feeling grounded at the same time. This game is very cozy with all the old FMVs and the cabin you get. 
There's also quite a lot of fish to catch in the game, but I wouldn't know because for whatever reason, I couldn't get a fish to bite. Everything I did just wouldn't work and they constantly would miss the lore every time. I don't know if it's an emulator issue or not, and I even checked the manual for the game and nothing. While this game looks great, I can't say my experience reflected the same positivity, mostly since I didn't even get a single fish to bite. I'm sure if I played on real hardware, this game would be great, but I think now it's time to go into our first sport fishing game with Bassmaster Classic Pro Edition for the SNES. This is our first dive into the world of sport bass fishing, and we got our great anglers to pick from. With this guy talking about 2B ass, a man of culture I see, Sean Grigsby is here and keep his name known because he makes a return. My favorite is D Thomas who invented the technique of flipping because he looks funny here. I'm gonna go with him. Pebble Lake is where we are fishing, but we get a few options to explore, so we visit the bait shop. This is where we meet this wonderful man. His motto is the three apps, fishing, fucking, and more fishing. I didn't have much money, so we had to go earn it. I was having really bad control issues with this game to the point you can only use up and down to scroll and move. I now am thinking this wasn't an emulator issue and how the actual game controlled, but unless I buy this and play it on my SNES, we will never know. Now that we're out in the water, we're ready to start fishing. We use the boat that controls like ass, and we use this little fish scanner to find the fishes. I even ran into someone trying to find a fish, and then I decided to seal this fishing spot. This game also uses mode 7, and it looks pretty alright. I, for the life of me, couldn't get a fish to bite for a good while, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but nothing at all would bite, until... Oh! Crab it! Come on, boy! Get that! Get that! Get it, boy! Come on! Get it! Get it! Get that, boy! Come on! Grab it, boy! Come on! Don't oh, dude! Fucking just grab it, please! Please! Hey, let's get my fucking lore, please! Oh my god, just grab the fucking lore, dude. Yes! Bring that boy home. Get that boy out of here, boy. Come on, bring him up here. Oh, slip it, boy. Oh, oh, I fucking lost him. God damn it, dude. I then couldn't figure out how to put a new line on that. And that was the end of our fishing adventure. We're not done with Bassmaster as Bassmaster 2000 with Sean Grigsby. The man is the lead person for the game and loves giving one liners whenever he can. This game features an expensive character creation with the choice of different colored shoes or a vest. This game lets you even pick your gender, which is cool. I just realized how older models with human faces looked and how gross it is since it looks like it's stapled on there. Now it's time to fish, and I made the water environment the coldest and worst place to fish as possible. Shaw will constantly talk to me, and when you move on the water, the most backwoods music starts to play. We did finally come across some fish, and the only fish I was able to catch was a catfish. Just to have Shaw give me sass about it not being a bass. You're supposed to be catching bass. Shaw Grisby, dude, shut the fuck up! I finally yeah, caught something! Yeah, you know I mean, goddamn fucking games we've been playing, and I've not caught anything, and I finally get something, and this motherfucker goes, You should have got the bass! Fuck you, Sean Grisby, you don't know anything, dude! The rest of my time was struggling to catch anything, as the bass would not bite. The competition came to an end as I caught nothing to weigh in. It was a sad day for a fisherman like me. Now, if that was a hoot being able to play as a character and live in the shoes of said character, it's actually a whole series with Natsume being part of it called The River King. River King is a fishing RPG where you play as the main pro tag trying to help your sister who has a disease that can only be cured if we go out and catch a fish. She even tells me that she's suffering. Meaning, it's up to us to head out and find the guardian fish. Now, if there's one thing all these series have in common, it's that they're the worst games I've ever played for fishing. Usually when you're fishing and you get a bite, your first instinct is to start reeling that bad boy in. Well, this game punishes you for that. I, for the life of me, spent so long trying to figure out how to catch something as fish kept stealing my bait and hooks, I even looked up a guide just to have the guide say this game played like the other games to so look at those guides for the controls. But thankfully I found the manual for River King where it tells you to wait for the fish to get tired and then press A to reel. What you're supposed to do is wait for the fish to swim till it stops and then reel it in. At any point the fish can start swimming again and you're just supposed to watch it till it stops and then repeat the process. It's one of the worst ways to fish I've ever seen. 
There's also little RPG battles with spiders and other random creatures, and these are very tacked on. I played this game for a while, and I just learned at this point that you could reel your rod in on the overworld, so that would have helped finding fish since the hitbox for them is very finicky, and it would have saved me hours of just doing this. See, I wish I knew how to catch stuff, dude. I just don't understand the catching mechanic in this. I gave up and moved on, so I guess the sister is dead. River King 2 has you dealing with this girl named Yuki who wants you to bring her Heaven Jewel back. The biggest difference from this in the first game is you're able to pick between a kid or a teen in this one. The fishing is exactly the same, but better visuals. The first fish I tried to catch stole my bait, the same thing for the second and the third. Guess fourth time's a charm as I was finally able to catch my first fish in the series. We also run into a bird who we murdered. The only real positive of the second game is that it looks nicer than the first game, but it still struggles with the same issues of not knowing where to go and the horrible tedium of switching between fishing mode and walking mode since you can't do both at the same time. There's also another game in the series for the GBC that was a Japan exclusive but did get a translation patch. I decided to try it out just to not catch anything for over an hour and I gave up. I tried this before I knew how the catching mechanics actually worked, but I still feel I'm not missing much. This one does seem more interesting since it's a pirate RPG, but I still feel like it's going to be the same exact issues in this one as the other two games had. With the Game Boy titles now being played, they released two more, one being on the DS and the other on the PS2, so let's dive into those. The DS version right from the start looks amazing with its graphics and animations. It seems quite promising and wow, the game actually has a tutorial on how to play unlike all the other games in the series. This one seems to be more fantasy with monster spirits. The main issue we're facing in this game is that our sister won't wake up as we're now tasked to help wake her up. We make it to a pond area as we're shown how to fish and that's when we run into this baby monster who wants us to catch a fish for him to consume. This is when our first problem shows itself, the controls. This game has some of the worst controls in the whole series. It's crazy it's the only one with the tutorial but somehow has the most complicated controls based on angles of the rod and where the fish is and how only some spots you can reel in versus some you can't. I tried for a good minute and I just couldn't catch a fish. Since I couldn't catch a fish, it's safe to assume my sister died. Lastly is River King A Wonderful Journey. It's the first game in the series that's in 3D and man. We open up to a fight between our parents so if domestic issues doesn't get you to want to fish, I don't know what will. You're able to pick four characters. You have bro, sis, father, and mother. I picked the mother. I'm sure each character would have their own story or goals, but the mom decides to leave and learn how to cook better. That's the whole plot. As for the fishing, it plays exactly like the other games, just in 3D. This game really did not do too well jumping into 3D. This game is so much worse than the other ones, with the fish feeling way off to pull in, NPCs being the same character, and you lose health for messing up on catching a fish and everything just feels very jank. The fact an NPC has to tell me playing the game longer to get better will make this game fun isn't a good look. The world does feel very cozy though if I have to bring anything good up. I do like the lack of music and just listening to the distant sounds of birds and bugs with the running water. It's the most relaxing game when it comes to fishing in the series. It just sadly plays the worst. I'm also glad there's no battle music for the fish since the hard cut off in the older games from no music to battle music was a little weird. So there is one more game in the series that being the N64 version but it's strictly Japanese. I'm sure it plays exactly the same as the other ones so it's not really worth looking into. This next game I wasn't able to track down a working ROM for and I didn't have any way to play hard copies of PS1 games easily. But let's go fly fishing seems interesting since you can walk around a map and head to a fishing spot. The fishing seems pretty bare bones however, but it's still cool that there's this whole area to explore. I at least wanted to mention it even if I couldn't play it since it seems pretty obscure. This next game is a Pokemon map fishing but was made by a team that still can't fix their game and make it run well and has the game crashed three times because of it not being optimized. Wait, that is just Pokemon. Re-Legends is an anime styled monster collector game that married Harvest Moon and had a kid with gardening and fishing and caring for fishes 
It's a very cute game with lots of problems that bring it down. Our main focus today is the fishing aspect as there's quite a lot of fishes to find and raise. You get the rod pretty early in the game so you can start your fishing journey in no time. Real Legends fishing is pretty basic but fun enough to not get boring. Having the player reel in the line while managing your tension gauge and hitting the arrow keys to whatever pops up on the screen. The issue comes more from the wonky detection with your buttons having the line somehow break just from being tossed into the water, and if you press anything before a fish grabs your lure, it will cause this long animation of you shaking your head and it's annoying. There's three types of fishes you can acquire in the game. A small fish, a medium fish, and a large fish. Medium fishes can be found by letting a small fish stay on the lure until they randomly show up and eat the fish, giving you a chance to catch them. Just make sure you have some energy left to do this or you will fail to capture instantly. After you get the fishes, you can either eat them, sell them, or put them in your pond to grow. Growing them is quite easy since it requires you to buy fish food from the shop and just refill the fish feeder. Just don't be like me and forget to feed them and have your rainbow fish die on you. Now you may be asking what's the main goal for the fishes, and that is the fish races that happen at the end of the month. I myself, being the master fisherman, was prepared, and I spent countless days sleeping over and over till this day came to do the fish race. And we're finally here at the fish race. And I entered my medium fish. He's been well fed and easily can wipe the floor with these guys. I was outlapped twice. Well, time to cover a better game that has fishing and somehow manages to make it a big deal in the game's world and fit the narrative. That game is none other than Moonglow Bay. Moonglow Bay has you controlling a male or female or even a non-binary character, getting through the loss of your partner as you both used to fish and sail around enjoying the freedom of the ocean. While everyone else saw the ocean as cursed and a dread for the whole town, you and your partner saw the beauty hiding under the waves. You start the game off as your partner teaches you how to fish to then give you a present with a kiss as this shot of the whole town is shown. You then cut to you in bed sulking all by yourself as you look at the picture of your partner. The dog snaps you out of your trance as a knocking can be heard. You go downstairs to open the door to see your daughter at the door and she tells you she's moved here to work with the mayor. She finally convinces you to open the present from your partner as it's been way too long. You unwrap the gift to see it's a fishing journal to mark all the fishes you find. You see a note inside the journal telling you that they're always by your side as your daughter says it's been three years and it's time to write a new chapter in your life. You tell your daughter that you'll meet them outside but you need to clean up first and this starts your first steps to letting go. The town is full of life as just from walking around you'll meet town folks doing their own routines and random wildlife digging through your trash or running around. You go and meet your daughter at the beach and she teaches you how to fish. The fishing controls are pretty basic. Don't break the line tension and you can use this mechanic where you pull to the side real hard to pull the fish in faster. The trick though is to just tap the button to throw your lure out and as soon as the fish bites, pull hard in. You should never break your line and it avoids fighting the fish. There are three different types of fish and ways to get certain ones. It's one of the few fish games with a lot of depth that doesn't hinder the gameplay in the slightest. Personally for me, all fish just feel the same that you're trying to catch, but since the fishing is fun, I don't mind it all that much. After catching the fishes, you decide to start a new path for yourself and fix the town's issues with the fall of the town's economy after the lack of fishermen or fish related jobs. Abby catches you both fishing and offers to teach you how to cook. Cooking has a nice minigame even if it can be tedious to cook for long periods of time, but I've seen way worse minigames for cooking in other games. After we're shown how to cook, you get told your boat is being held at the boat shop and if you want to recover it, go there. We find the boat shop and are told she can have it fixed if we pay at least $100 but the only way to get this money is to fish and make our seafood dishes for sale. After we achieve this, we're able to set sail and explore the open oceans and this game instantly gave me Wind Waker vibes. But unlike Wind Waker, you're given this whole open ocean to explore with the only thing guiding me is a suggestion on where I should go, but you can actually go anywhere that you want. I was exploring the icy areas of the ocean surrounded by walls of icebergs even though my actual destination wasn't even near there. You even get a second way to catch fish by throwing nets into the water and I enjoy this a lot since you can get a bunch of fishes at once. It ended up being an easy way to get a lot of them fast. After a long journey of traversing the ocean, you may be asking, what do you do with the fishes you catch? You can either cook them, or you can take them to the aquarium and show them off. And like I said, any fishing game needs an aquarium of some sort. It just, it, it should be standard at this point. It's safe to say I love this game, and I planned to just play it for like 30 minutes, and I ended up playing for two hours. 
I even now kind of want to still finish the game, so who knows? Maybe we get a full review someday, but I do recommend Moon Glow Bay. But I wanted to warn people that this game does have mixed reviews on Steam, with some people saying they're losing save files and other huge glitches locking them out of playing the game. There was a new patch just released for this game, so maybe these issues are now fixed, but I wouldn't know. I didn't try it yet with the new patch. I again never had any real glitches when I played, but I'm going to say just be cautious on getting this, but I had a lot of fun with it. Now that we dealt with a good game, it's time to deal with two bad ones. Fish on 3D is a bass fishing game on the 3DS, and I'm sure this was made by two people because this is not good at all. Strangely enough, it uses your Miis, and I don't see any sign of Nintendo working on this. As for the game, it honestly looks pretty decent for a 3DS title. The environments feel comfy, and the fishes have a nice slimy look to them. This is about where my praise for the game ends. It feels like it's trying to be the old Sega games while being really bad at it with having an announcer that never shuts up and yells FISH every time you get a fish. The fish also seems to just freeze and lose its animation while reeling in. The way you move the boat around looks really bad as this is the most agile boat I've ever seen in my life. Besides that, this is just your average fishing game and I can't recommend it since there is so many better fishing games you can play. The 3DS has another fishing game, Big Bass Arcade, and this feels like a carbon copy of the other game. The boats even move exactly the same, but this one looks way worse. There's even a dumb announcer. This time he sounds like he's whisper yelling so his parents don't wake up. It's also really tedious to get any fish into the boat. You can spend 20 seconds sometimes fighting with a fish that's right there next to you and he will not get in the boat. As far as I can tell, this game is made by another company compared to the others, but there's no way they didn't communicate in some form since these are so similar. This game is bad and just stay away from the majority of the 3DS fishing games. Real quick, this game that I'm about to show is not a fishing game, but I wanted to show it off anyway since I thought it was a fishing game when I got it but it has some of the most cursed cutscene animations I've ever seen. This is a good example of sometimes just not trying is for the best. There's two other games I want to mention that are more little features to things already built into the 3DS, starting with the AR cards. These were cards you could get that would allow you to have 3D models to interact with your environment, and I don't own the original cards on the system anymore, but I do own these Miku ones and the Kid Icarus ones. These are quite cool as some can be used for a virtual concert and the Kid Icarus ones have a whole battle thing but getting back on topic, they made an AR fishing and it's fine. There's over 30 fish to collect and a dragon to catch as it turns into a full boss fight. The 3DS really was ahead of its time man. The second game is the ultimate angler for the 3DS Street Pass. This looks really cute and I love the design of the girl who joins you for fishing. There's more than 150 fishes to collect in this game. You can catch things like the bluegill, giant isopods, and something that is really unique is the fact you can catch things like the Loch Ness Monster to things like extinct fishes, like this guy, which was a fish whose bones were armor for its body. These guys are always shown to have plates covering the outside of their bodies as if it's like armor, but they were actually covered by skin, so it wouldn't have looked as cool as this picture does. We also learned that they're way smaller, so yeah, this man is getting nerfed badly. Overall, it seems pretty simple and fun. I personally don't use Street Pass all that much, so I actually didn't even know Street Pass games were a thing besides Find Me and the puzzles. I think I'm going to take a break from dedicated fishing games and talk more about the games with fishing in them, since it's really crazy to me just how bad a lot of these fishing games feel compared to just games with fishing in it. I won't do big reviews on all of these since this is more about the minigame part and not the full game. But let's start with Minecraft Fishing, where you craft a rod and throw your reel in and get to see the fish go up to your bobber and pull it. I even like how there's multiple fish you can catch, even if it's much faster just to go under the water and kill them yourself. It's still neat and never feels intrusive, it's just not the most viable to actually get fishes in the game. Animal Crossing is another series where fishing isn't the most complex, but always ends up being my favorite thing to do. I just love going out and tossing my lure to see what bites. The fact fishing has been in every mainline game just shows the importance of it being here. You also get the cool reward of filling your whole aquarium out, and if this isn't a nice reward, I don't know what is. 
In New Horizons, you can bring fish you catch to CJ and he will make statues you can own of the fishes you catch. They also added dive fishing which allows you to catch things like starfish or the giant isopod. It's always nice to see fishing getting expanded upon in Animal Crossing, but Nintendo has other characters who can fish, like Kirby. Kirby in the Forgotten Lands has its own little fishing game. That's the first for the series. You unlock it after saving 155 Waddle Dees. It's quite simple and just has you pressing the button on screen to reel in the fish. It's not hard, but it doesn't seem that engaging and the only fish you can catch is the same one with the biggest version being gold. However, since it's Kirby, I'll let it slide for it still being so cute. You even get this little figure for getting all the fishes. Maybe Mario can teach him some fishing tips since you can fish in three Mario games, one being Paper Mario and the Origami King where you throw your rod out and catch cheap sheeps. It has very simplistic controls but still feels very nice to fish. And the other game is Mario Odyssey, but I feel a little weird putting this one in since it's more of a capture you can get and it's for two sections only. Then there's the mini games in the Mario Party series, which I'm not going to cover all of them. But a lot of them either just involve fishing rods and aren't really fishing per se, or you have the ones that are just straight up fishing or catching with nets. It's weird to think of how many fishing games are in Mario Party and not a single one crossed my mind till I did my own research. Then, no one ever expected this to happen again, but Sonic has fishing in the new game and this time, Big is teaching you. These fish models are very impressive and look way too realistic next to Sonic and Big, but I cannot hate it at all. I'm just glad we're embracing Big again, and I hate how much he was hated for wanting to just fish. The coelacanth is in this as well, so my rating goes up to 10 out of 10. The actual fishing is quite bare bones, but I would rather have easy and fast controls over making fishing tedious. Just throw your hook out and get a bite, and when the ripples overlap with the red circle, reel it in. Fishing is supposed to be relaxing, so making it tedious for the sake of being different ruins what fishing is about. Which Sonic here hits the mark spot on by making it simple, but engaging. Another game owned by Sega that a lot of people don't seem to even realize has fishing is the Persona series. You can fish in Persona 4 and 5. In Persona 4 you catch a fish by keeping the line in the center of the bigger line while holding space. It's pretty similar to Stardew Valley fishing, but I heard no one really likes fishing in that game. Persona 5 fishing seems to be a mini game that a lot of people don't even know is in the game, but it's pretty similar to Persona 4. But Morgana joins you, so it's way better. There's a shop here that you can buy stuff with points you get from fishing, but a lot of this stuff will be outclassed easily in later parts of the game. If you're wondering how to access this spot, you can either find it by joining Ryuji on July 6th, but if you refuse, then the only other method is reading the book Fish Pond Spotter. So, happy fishing. Sega also brought fishing to their other flagship series Yakuza, with Yakuza 0, 3, and 6 having their own version of fishing, with 0 and 3 being more traditional fishing while playing entirely different, with 0 having this top-down perspective, and 3 has a first-person perspective and you're trying to reel it in while watching it from a distance. 6 is way different, with it being a rail shooter which Sega is no stranger to, and I think I prefer 6 to the other two, but that's just me. Even has a boss with a great white. If there's a minigame I could recommend from the series, it's definitely this one for sure. Shinmu is a series I've always wanted to get into, but today we're just talking about the letdown that was 3, because it has its own fishing in it that feels pretty basic but somehow looks way better than most modern fishing games. A unique thing Shinmu 3 does with its fishing is when you throw your rod out, you get two different cameras, with one being the top camera perspective of your rod, and the other one being a view. It's the first time I've seen a fishing game give you both perspectives at once, which is what I would say if later on in the video I didn't review four other fishing games that basically do this same camera trick, so. As for fishing controls, it's move the rod in the direction when the game tells you to and rotate the stick to reel it in. Nothing insane, but there's actually a good amount of fishing spots in the game, so the variety is nice. I really should make a video about this series someday. I think I can fish here but we'll have to see. One of the weirdest game series to get fishing is none other than Dynasty Warriors 9. It's just waiting around till you press X and then reel it in. On one hand, it's fine for what it is and can be relaxing, but on the other hand, why is there an open world map for Dynasty Warriors? And like, why this series to get a fishing minigame? I don't hate the fishing here, but I don't think anyone asked for it. And every time you catch a fish, it plays a loud crowd cheering sound even if no one's around. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another open world game that has fishing and it plays like Dynasty Warriors 1 for the most part of just throwing it out and waiting for a bite and then reeling it back in. 
I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but you may have noticed a lot of these fishy mini games are just waiting till you get a bite with no extra fluff or whatever. But I assume your opinion comes down to if it's bad or not on if you don't want the extra fluff or not. Also, this is one of the few PS4 games that needed a installation disc, and I bought this game used and it didn't come with it. I have still yet to play this game since it came out because of this. Dark Cloud 2 is another anime RPG style game with fishing in this series for those who don't know is made by Level 5, the creators of Yokai Watch. You know, that game that was bullied out of America by Pokemon fans who complain about it being a Pokemon clone while wanting reasons for Game Freak to make Pokemon better, but throw away games that could give Pokemon a run for its money. Dark Cloud 2 fishing seems fun and with you having to flick the rod in the direction the arrow points while watching your tension gauge. It's not the most exciting, but the fish look neat in this game and I'm sure I could just spend hours out here fishing for sure. I also included this game for my friend Dan, so you're welcome. I now never have to say another word about Dark Cloud ever again. Breath of Fire is a game series I never heard about till now, with Breath of Fire 3 having fishing, but this feels exactly like Stardew Valley fishing. It's sad this is probably one of the nicer looking 2D fishing games in the video. Again, not like it really had that much to compete with. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is another anime game with fishing, but I really like this one. You use your tail and are able to wiggle it to attract a fish to bite, and then when one finally bites, you have to press the button once the marker lines up in the highlighted area, and then once you reel it up, you literally punch the fish and catch it. Other characters do get actual fishing rods if they don't have a tail, but it's way more interesting with the tail. Survival Kids for the Game Boy Color is a Zelda clone, but looks decent at being said clone. The fishing here is bare bones, like it's basically Pokemon levels of bare bones where you find the spots that have fishes jumping out and throw the rod till something bites. That's it. You can pick a boy or girl though, so that's kind of neat. Guilty Gear Strive, known for its high impact fighting and then the controversy with Bridget, you would think the easiest way to get players to unlock things would be having them fight. Strive decides that's dumb and makes a whole fishing minigame for that. I feel Guilty Gear Strive's mechanics on fishing are quite weird since yes, you're technically fishing, but you're fishing for stuff like artwork or BGMs. It's the weirdest way I've seen any way to unlock stuff, but it's also one of the most interesting ways I've seen. Now talking about interesting or unique games, this game right here has been recommended to me three times and I, I just... I don't even know. It has fishing and... Yeah, I ain't touching this shit. Fathom Batula, probably butchered that one, is another what the fuck kind of game having huge vibes of LSC Dream Emulator, but you can fish. The fishing is just throw the rod and press the button to reel it in like Minecraft fishing. I wish there was more to talk about because this game looks so interesting, so maybe I'll do a full review on this one day since I'm a sucker for these types of games. Monster Hunter is another series I got recommended with World and Rise having fishing that's pretty neat. Rise and World have the same exact fishing gameplay for the most part as you throw your rod out and wait till the fish bites and then you reel it in, but unlike most fishing games, you can see the fish in the water and it flops out which is cute. Now, I have two penguin games that have fishing in them, one of them being Club Penguin, and man, I played the fishing game so much when I was younger. It was so easy to farm money playing this that I only grinded this for money in the game and never really played anything else. But sadly, servers are gone for this game and the fan servers for this got shut down by police and Disney, but it also didn't help that three people got arrested for this. It's a long story. Go look into it if you're curious. The fishing has you moving your lure down to grab the fish, and you can use a fish you caught to grab the bigger fish at the end and have this cutscene play. The next penguin game is Fun Fun Pingu, and it's another whole button to watch your line tension. Also, this guy's video I found has some of the best and worst commentary I've seen, to the point it was more interesting than the actual game. It was happening! <laughs> Shit. You got away. That's all there is to it, Pingu's pretty bad. Sea of Thieves is a game I played twice and ate raw food and threw up. Strangely enough, this has literally River King controls besides being able to move your rod in different directions. You're supposed to reel in when the fish is tired and not moving, and my opinions are still the same about this mechanic. At least Sea of Thieves feels better. Speaking of rare, Banjo and Kazooie, if you didn't know, has a fishing minigame you probably never heard of. On the GBA. Banjo and Kazooie Grunty's Revenge has this fun and exciting fishy mini game. You throw your rod out to grab the fish, and I'm not even gonna lie, it's not that good. I remember hating this though when I was younger, and cool fact, this was the banjo game I grew up with, so I remember being so confused hearing about the N64 banjo from people 
and learning mind game was nothing like this. In the GBA version, you can transform into a mouse, which never happens in the N64 version. So it was a little weird being like, did you get the mouse power up? And they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? We play is a fan favorite apparently because I was told to play this three times and I mean, it's fishing all right. There's a score system and if you get a small fry, you lose 50 points, but you can gain double points by getting the bonus fish. Personally for me, I'm a bigger fan of Clubhouse Games version of fishing. It's very relaxing with its music and visuals and can be played with more than one person. It's a nice treat to see the fish models when you reel them up, and while this may not be bombastic like some of the fishing games on the list, this just hits right for a fun distraction. Or if you ever wanted to be a car and fish, then Coral Q has a perfect fishing minigame that's simple and fun. I think just the novelty alone of being a car fishing makes up for it. A short hike, I've heard nothing but great things about the art style, and it's downright stunning, so to no one's surprise, the fishing is really cute. It's very simple, just throw your rod out and wait for a fish to bite and reel them in. But I'm all for the relaxing vibes that this game brings with it, and the variety of fishing locations is really cool. Then you have a total 180 with the feeling that Cult of the Lamb brings with its fishing, and it's pretty meh. Just one of those mini games that keep it in line to get the fish. I do feel it brings a good distraction for the usual gameplay of getting followers for your Cult, but I don't see many people choosing this as a relaxing fishing game. Hades also has fishing and it's another one of those wait till you get a bite and then reel it in. You know, if I had a nickel for every fishing in my play that had something to deal with the evilness or hell slash the underworld, I would have two nickels, which isn't much, but it's still weird it happened twice. Tales of Arise is the first PS5 game I bought, which I even got the collector's edition which came with this cool figure. Sadly, while it may be the first game I bought for the system, the way I got it was very dumb. You see, I placed a pre-order a long time ago for the game with the collector's edition, expecting I would have a PS5 by the time the game came out. I then forgot about the pre-order and woke up months later with $200 gone. I also still didn't have a PS5, so I owned this game for months after and I finally got my PS5. I still haven't even touched this game. The fishing in it really has a great atmosphere and very locations to fish at, but it's a little strange as once you get a bite, a line appears and then you have to press the button when the line hits the ring. And then this will decide what fish you get based on where you pressed in the ring. And then while reeling it in, you will have to watch your line tension and press buttons when the fish jumps out of the water or swims fast. It's a very long fishing encounter since you're battling the fish and lowering its health bar, but it could be rewarding to some. For me, not so much. But man, I really do need to play this game already. These two games are basically Animal Crossing fishing. One of these as well as commonly known to be a huge Animal Crossing clone. My Sims has you just throwing your rod out like Animal Crossing, waiting until you get a bite, and then pressing A. The only thing worth noting is you can see the bobber in the water. Then there's Magician's Quest, and yeah, it's Animal Crossing. Throw the rod out, but you can actually reel your bobber in unlike in Animal Crossing, how you're stuck waiting for the fish to see it. You mash and then catch. That's the model for this game. One of the strangest games to include fishing is Near Automata. You know that game where you can self-destruct to make the android you're playing as show off more of her ass? What's really cute is the pot is used as the lure and you even make a little seat to sit down on. It's strangely a very peaceful time waster to do in the world of Nier, but I can say right now, I never spent any time doing this, but maybe it's worth looking into more. And I mean, it has a basking shark, you know, shark pog. It's worth checking out. There was also a huge rumor that's still being debated if Tubi's ass is more polygons than the entirety of Ocarina of Time. Why am I bringing this up? It's because I didn't know how to cut back to another Nintendo game. Zelda is known for its massive worlds, brain-teasing dungeons, and the impressive lore and world building. I, however, know Zelda for being the series with probably some of the most relaxing fishing in all of video games. It started from a little-known game on the GBC called Link's Awakening, the one with the evil Kirby in it. The fishing was later fleshed out as the remake of Link's Awakening came out, giving the area a lot more charm and personality, even having a more distinguished look for fishes. The fishing here isn't that challenging, but it's a nice start to what would soon be a pretty fun minigame in Zelda as time goes on. Ocarina of Time being the first 3D Zelda game and taking a lot of inspiration from Link's Awakening to the point Anuma said that he was inspired to make Ocarina of Time give players the feeling he got from Link's Awakening. Meaning, the fishing is now in 3D. The easiest thing for players to see is just how beautiful and relaxing the environment is here. The sound of the rushing water, to the occasional splashes of fish jumping from the water, it's a tranquil place. It's probably why even as a kid I spent a lot of time here de-stressing from the dungeons and the fear of Ganon. 
I feel like the fishing hole can give off two different emotions depending on who you come here as is either young link or adult link young link being here gives the feeling of a kid just doing a fun little hobby even with the stress of the spiritual stones lingering the world isn't in ruins yet but when you arrive here as adult link that feeling becomes this feeling of being on the brink of insanity as the world around you is beyond destroyed from his home in kokiri forest to the castle town he spent wandering and exploring as it was probably one of the first time link ever fell out of his element it then gives this whole feeling of link taking the time he needs to recoup and get lost in the feeling of throwing your hook out and letting the worries fade for just a moment it's honestly why a lot of adults seem to fish. It's just a way to relax and rid of the worries of everyday life for that little bit of time. It then helps a lot that they use the most comfy music in the game for the fishing hole, having the gamer use Kakariko's village music. Which to some would seem lazy, but I know the devs knew what they were doing. You can really tell that this area did hit home for a lot of people, because if you go to the fishing pond videos for this game, you'll find a lot of comments of people just getting deep and talking about how much this area meant to them. It makes me remember how powerful video games and the memories we hold for them can be. The fact that this whole area has its own special day and night cycle, and it helps that the guy who runs the pond is very chill. He does itch a lot for whatever reason, but... I'll let it slide, he's too cool for my books. A little detail that I love is when you visit the pond as a kid, he has a full head of hair, and then he loses it seven years later. You can even steal his hat off his head, and if you end up losing it, the hat will never return even in the ending cutscene. You will have to pay 50 rupees for doing that though. I think the best part about this area is that while it may be optional unless you 100% the game, the rewards here are worth it, like the heart piece and the gold scale which lets you dive deeper into the water making these really feel like worthwhile rewards. Plus the fact you can get a new lore by looking for it and then using it to catch the rarest fish in the series is nice. I can really see why this place is loved by many and it was sad there wasn't any fishing in Majora's Mask until the 3DS version. The Majora's Mask 3DS fishing ponds are quite the upgrade from the original one in Ocarina of Time with two fishing pond locations. One right before Southern Swamp and another in Great Bay Coast. It even uses the Kakariko music again, which I believe is the only instance this song ever appears in the game. The biggest difference here is the fact you can use two lures right off the bat, and there's a lot, and I mean a lot of fishes to catch here. Some being really strange or unique, and one of them being Lord Jabu Jabu himself. While there's more fish to catch, this comes with the issue of finding these fishes. As certain mask or time of day, can dictate what fish may or may not spawn. Meaning there's a lot of chance for frustration for some players having to leave and enter the fishing pond if the fish they want isn't there. There's also no real reward for catching all the fish besides you see your progress on the fishing pond wall. I however do think looking at the fishing pond here as a I need to do this for a reward defeats the whole purpose of why it's here. While OOT did have rewards for fishing, I don't think many people really went and fished for the rewards, and more for the experience of fishing, which I think this is perfect for people who are looking for that experience again. It's even the only area outside of boss rooms where you can use the Fierce DD mask. If there's any change in the 3DS version that I do really like, this is it. And even if when I first played MM3D, I never really touched the fishing, I could easily see this changing and me getting lost for hours here. Twilight Princess is a game I remember fondly, and a game I did spend hours fishing on, and also playing that marble game that I never could beat. You do get a frog lure by beating this, so it's worth it. The fishing pond here though is the most fleshed out fishing the series has ever seen, to the point I could even argue this whole area feels like a smaller separate game. With hidden treasure to uncover, like an empty bottle, a piece of heart, and even the band sinking lore, there's just a good amount of stuff to do that isn't just fishing here. And if you have a keen eye, you'll also notice this picture here on the wall with one of them showing the fishing guy from Ocarina of Time. Well, you see, the owner of the fishing shop is Hina, and she believes she's a descendant of the fishing guy for Ocarina of Time, to the point she's even itchy all the time just like him, but she tells us she's not sure why. Hina is also the youngest child out of the two siblings you meet in the game. She even has a pet bird who tells you that she's really old, which causes wacky fights between them. You can even cause a ruckus so bad she will kick you out. Now the reason why I feel the fishing in this game is way more immersive is because there's a lot of interaction with Hina and you, to the point she even flirts with you. There's a lot of cute interactions too if you pay the 100 rupees to bring her with you. If you find the heart piece, she will make a comment about you stealing someone's heart and call you a sweetheart. There's even this really cute dialogue that can happen where she will ask who your type is and give you an option picking her or her sister, 
and get sad if you say her sister. I remember doing this when I was young and I felt so bad and I kept trying to figure out how to trigger this again because I forgot what her name was when I picked my option. There's also a lot of random stuff Hina will comment on like how Link never removes his hat or how he just goes and breaks jars in people's homes. If you also decide to cheat in the marble game she created she will make you restart and get very upset. There's still a bunch of other secrets I haven't covered in the fishing pond, like how there's a book called The Legend of the Hylian Loach, Twilight Fish. It's a little parody of the story of Twilight Princess, but does help you learn the location of the Hylian Loach. Lastly, I want to mention if you find the canoe in the shop, she tells you that the canoe is only for when she gets a boyfriend and not something customers can use, which is the same canoe she uses when you bring her along as a guide. There's technically an ending objective for the fishing pond and it's helping Hina see the rare Hylian loach since that's her dream and she wants to put it into the aquarium with the other fishes you can catch and store them there. There's still a lot of things I haven't covered but I'll leave you to find them on your own. Hina should have been Link's love interest for sure, she's great in all her itchy glory. The last Zelda game for fishing surprisingly wasn't Wind Waker, the game built around huge bodies of water. It was technically the sequel that did it. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass is pretty basic when it comes to fishing, just having you spin circles on the touchscreen and not reeling when the fish jumps or your tension gauge is too high. It's not as unique as Twilight Princess, but for an on-the-go fishing minigame for the time, it served its purpose. It's quite adorable to watch Link cheer and get excited when he catches something, but I think it's time to move on to another highly successful Nintendo franchise. Pokemon is another huge series that has fishing that has been unchanged since its first game. Throw out your lore, wait till this happens, then press A and you have a battle. I'm going to be the first one to say this, but anyone who tells you fishing in Pokemon is relaxing, I feel is lying. The reason being is because it's hard to get relaxed when half of your fishing is hearing this. While the idea of going on these routes with the beautiful music can be relaxing, it's the same issue I had with River King. It sets up this whole feeling to then be ruined by the battle music. I would say diving or surfing is much more relaxing, but those come with the same issue of random battles ruining the relaxation of it. Then there's the fishing in Hey You Pikachu. I am glad I have my old streams from 3 years ago for this game because I can really show off just how much I hated this. The fishing would be perfect for relaxing and watching Cheese Rat fish, but the way you control this is frantically yelling at Pikachu to reel it in. But a lot of the time he loses the fish or Professor Oak comes in and tells you Pikachu is too weak. There's a bunch of words you can tell Pikachu like hold on, reel it in, and pull. Even if Pikachu doesn't get the message all the time. There's a rumor going around for this game that I have no idea if it's true or not. But you're apparently supposed to talk like a child to have a better chance of him getting what you want or listening to you. But I never found proof that this is something you have to do. But if this is true then talk with your baby voice. It should work better. Something that's kind of cool is you can get a lore upgrade called the Lucky Hook, but good luck getting Pikachu to listen to buy what you want. No, but Lucky Hook. Lucky Hook. Lucky Hook. Buy the Lucky Hook. Buy the Lucky Hook. Lucky Hook. Lucky, Lucky Hook. Lucky Hook. Lucky Hook. Lucky Hook! Pikachu! Lucky Hook. Pikachu! By the Lucky Hook! No! <laughs> By the Lucky Hook! By the Lucky Hook, Pikachu! Get the Lucky Hook! I would really like the Lucky Hook, Pikachu! Please get that one! The Lucky Hook! <laughs> Just buy the fucking thing already! Lucky Hook! Pikachu! Yes! Yes! No! We put it back! The best thing I can say about this is it makes it an amazing background screen for your TV. But I'm gonna be real, I do think this game is awful, but it's a guilty pleasure of mine to hang out with Pikachu. I wish we got a sequel so badly. I would buy day one for sure. Personally, I think people are too hard on this game because Pikachu won't listen, but think of it this way. It's like if you take your dog out and he ignores you sometimes. You wouldn't hate him for that. It's how I feel about this yellow rat always being by my side. It makes the ending so much harder as you say goodbye to Pikachu. It's a tearjerker for sure.
We're not done with Pokemon because Pokemon actually has a fishing game that is considered fully lost. We do have a good amount of video on the game, but the reason for it being lost was because it was a DS download play game that only was available for 12 hours or till you turned your DS off. The game was called Poke Park Fishing Rally DS for the Nintendo DS. It seems like a neat little fishing game and I love that you can see some water Pokemon in their low poly 3D models. I feel like this may have been the old models from Coliseum, but it's really hard to tell. The fishing just has you waiting for a Pokemon to bite and then pressing A. An animation plays of you catching them and then the fish is ranked. There's a few maps and some will have random Pokemon just chilling around like this Slowbro who's sleeping or Polito dancing. It's cute and I love seeing Pokemon sprites animating. The game features Pokemon from Gen 1 to Gen 3, but obviously it will only be water Pokemon that can be caught. It really sucks this game is lost now and we will probably never see it released unless someone who may somehow own a ROM of it decides to release it. Fire Emblem also couldn't resist dipping their toes into the pond with three houses and Engage having their own fishing mechanics. With three houses having you pressing A at the right time and they form it like an actual battle you would do in the game. Engage has you pressing A but you need to pull the fish into the blue circle and then mash A to catch it. I feel Engage's method is more interesting while three houses just comes off as tedious over time but being a Fire Emblem fan just seems tedious enough. I mean, what other gaming community wouldn't get mad about not being able to hold underage girls' hands in a game? If this wasn't an Ultra Kill, then I don't know what is. Oh wait, I do. Ultra Kill also has fishing, which is crazy going from the bombastic action and killing where you're supposed to be always moving and flowing to the point you're flipping a coin to shoot a bullet off of it and just ripping and tearing to then slow down and enjoy the moment of fishing. The fishing here is one of those where you just keep the line in the part they highlight, which I find this the most boring method of fishing. I think if anything, finding this level is cooler than the actual fishing gameplay, but the fish look cool at least. Okami is a series that I feel is slept on hard. One of those people sleeping on it is me. But we're talking about the fishing in the game. You end up meeting this kid who wants to fish, so you draw him a fishing line and once you reel it in, you draw a line through it to catch it. It also has an ore fish you can catch. Just for having an ore fish, I really need to check this out. Deadly Premonition is a game series I only know about because the writer or creator had a lot of heat from Twitter. After one of his games had some weird choices and depictions of characters, and it did not look really good on his part. The fishing in this is very unique, but it's really bad. You have to wait till this roulette appears, and then you have to have it land on a fish. If you don't, you don't get the fish. The music, however, here is a bop, and I love it. I can listen to this song for hours. I highly recommend you go check out the music just for this game alone when it comes to fishing. It's worth it. This next game, I'm going to say right now, I never got to the fishing. But I do know it has fishing as the back of the box advertises it. But I will explain why in two hours I never got to fish once. Lost in Blue Shipwreck is by Konami and it's a survival game where you survive after a shipwreck. This game has a lot of weird choices like the fact only some text is voice acted while majority of it will have them moving their mouth and nothing coming out. I only ever saw something similar like this in Sakura Wars where you would have talking to then have no talking for a few text boxes to then go right back into it. You hear your boat exploding as a fire has broken out. You're then told to evacuate and then you get to the escape boat as you see this girl talking to a guy in the ship as she refuses to leave since her dog can't be taken on the boat. We then see the boat set off as it starts to slow down as something is wrong with the propeller. Aiden then says we will check it out to see if we can fix it as we then see the boat exploding off of the distance. Then a wave hits the boat causing Aiden to get thrown overboard as a guy throws a huge case to try to save us but then they still chose to leave us behind. I really thought it would take no time to start fishing but boy was I wrong. The biggest issue with this game is that it has three meters you have to manage at all times, hunger, thirst, and rest. Now this doesn't sound at all that bad, but then these meters will go down so fast that it can make it really hard to recover since most food is either very scarce or recovers next to nothing. Here's a good example. Coconuts are pretty common to find and basically recover four points each. By the time you've eaten one coconut and then found another one, you basically have already used up the points you recovered. Then the game later on lets you meet this girl from the boat making where you have to now manage double the resources for both of you. I kept drinking the river water and eating wild berries and mushrooms which just caused both of my characters to get sick. There was many times where I would finally cure one of them to have my other character be sick and I was spending a lot of time just trying to keep them alive instead of going out and getting the supplies I needed to progress. Another weird choice the game also does is sleeping or resting will raise your rest bar which makes sense. While somehow lowering both your hunger and food at the same rate it's been lowering if you're doing something. 
meaning it can actually end up being a game over if you were to go to sleep and not have enough resources to recover your stats. Now I did find footage of the fishing and like most things in this game it has tacked on motion controls with spear fishing, then you have fishing where you reel in and flick the Wiimote the way it tells you to and that's about it. I think the only redeeming quality this game has is the fact it has 14 different endings with some of them being the most weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. One of them you get turned into mushrooms and die. Another where you and Lucy leave the island and then die. And then there's one where you get a pirate ship as everyone else dies and you get saved before you die. Also, thank you to Squeaky the Zeppa and Game Over Town for actually playing these games because Jesus man, I couldn't touch these any more than I did. A game I never thought we would see ever come to America and a spin-off of the series with a character I thought was long forgotten is none other than Chin Chan, Me and My Professor on Summer Vacation. It's a spin-off game of the series Boku no... I'm not gonna fucking pronounce it. Which is a series I wanted to cover here, but I feel these games really deserve their own video. For now on, the spin-off will have to do. Most of you who grew up with Adult Swim probably know this guy for the show Shin Chan, a raunchy comedy anime, at least over here in America. While the whole cartoon we were shown having a full redone dub and didn't really follow the Japanese original at all. But Marso and George's parents give them weekly allowances! Well, if their parents gave them weekly horse whippings, would you want one of those too? Depends! You still hit like a girl! With a lot more references to America and having more raunchier jokes compared to the Japanese version, where this is more for kids over there. Even though the original manga was supposed to be for young adults to adults, kinda on par with Family Guy. Well hopefully that explained everything because this game itself is nothing like the show at all, with Shin Chan on summer vacation and luckily for us, he can fish during this trip and it's one of those where you see the fish's shadow, throw your hook out and then reel it in. That's it. The amazing part about this game is hearing the environment around you engulfing you into the world so seamlessly while fishing. That's where this game shines. Again, expect someday a full review of the series, but for now, well it looks like our time in fishing minigame land is over, back to the big boys of fishing. And what better way to go big or go home than to fish for kaijus. Kaiju fishing is a game on Steam and how it got on Steam is beyond me. I will say this now, I played the demo and boy. This is not a good experience at all. To the point the game soft locked on a fish after it bit my lore. Your goal is to go and sail around catching huge kaiju sized fish. The fishing feels terrible to the point you're reeling it in. Doesn't feel like you're actually doing that. The only way I have any indication that I'm even reeling the fish in is the sound effect that plays. But it's also not playing correctly. It kind of just goes on and off. So it's really bad with that too. You also have to hit the button when the fish jumps out or you lose it. It just feels like a really bad version of Moonglow Bay. Then there's Hooked On Bass Fishing, and this has to be one of the most impressive fishing DSiWare games I've ever seen. You throw your hook out and reel it in in this 3D environment till a fish bites it. You even see the fish model and everything. As you're reeling the fish in, it has this weird swipe line mechanic to bring it in, but it actually feels pretty nice once you get used to it. Once you get it out of the water, you gotta catch it with the net or it will fall back into the water. Again, a very unique experience, especially for a DSiWare game. Fishing Resort is probably the most expensive Wii fishing game on the market. I for one thought it was gonna be like the Boku series with it being this giant island you could explore, opening a bunch of ideas and different paths you could take. And then you start the game off and it's not really that, but it's kind of also that. It's, it's weird. The first thing you're greeted with is picking your character and designing it. I find it weird that you can pick a kid since this is supposed to be you going off on a resort by yourself, but maybe this kid has cool parents that just let him do whatever he wants. I make the closest I can to myself and our fishing journey starts. This is actually a really beautiful looking Wii game with the colors and lighting. It's a very warm vibe that's quite welcoming. This guy here is the first one we meet after getting to the island and he teaches us how to fish. The fishing controls are quite simple. You pull back and throw forward to cast, you then swing the Wii remote up to catch a fish. Reeling has you spinning your nunchuck to bring the fish back in. Personally, it feels weird when it comes to reeling in. It doesn't feel like it's always reading your motions. This can be seen more when you have to move your Wii Remote to match the icon here. More often than not, I would move my Wii Remote just to have it not really register in the game. But after this short tutorial, we check into the hotel and finally get to see our new room for the time being. While there's not much to do here, it's still very comfy and you get this nice view. 
We also learned the currency here is based on the fish you catch, so if we want to stay rich, we gotta catch the fish. The goal of this game is to go around the island and do quests for people and get rewards like getting the guy to open the bait shop to get upgrades for your lords, but most of the time you're going to be fishing. There's this bulletin board that will have events that happen that you can partake in. My favorite was the aquarium you could visit with all sorts of fishes and creatures from common coastal fish all the way to the frozen arctic. The aquarium is already full with fishes, so whatever you catch won't come here, so that kinda sucks. Something that kinda sucks is the fact that this game seems to be setting up for the map to be quite expansive with you being able to rent a bike to travel around, but it ends up just being a pathway to the beach and then just the beach, with some of the water being able to be explored on a boat, and that's kinda it. I was really hoping this would be quite bigger, but for what it is, I'll accept it. Honestly, I'm more surprised that they even got something like this on the Wii. While the game may lack variety for things to do, it sure makes up for it by feeling like a huge resort that you can spend days here. Rapala Wii Fish is the fever dream of fishing games as we start the game off with this guy dancing to then be brought to this wacky shenanigans of a game. Even the fish is talking to me. The story of the game is you're joining a global competition to win one billion dollars. The characters you can play as are quite the cast. You've got Ninja, Chef Guy, Man Who Shops at Bucky's, and then Foreign Sounding Girl. Then you got Zogby, who feels like the devs have some explaining to do with him. I picked Emily as she's up her own ass, so I'm pretty sure she'll be good. This is basically Mario Kart battle mode with you having to catch a fish and bring it back to the spot you started at and fill up the point bar. You're all actively doing this at the same time, but you can slow your opponents down by getting items that can stop them in their paths. As for controlling everything, it's really bad. You turn with the Wiimote and it's not the most reliable since you will have to readjust multiple times to face the way you wanted to cast at. When it comes to getting the fish, the trick is to cast it out, then reel it in and wait for a fish to be interested. Once a fish does become interested, it will play this cutscene as you're now supposed to reel it in at a certain speed while it makes this clicking sound to then have the fish do an evil laugh and then bite down the lure. Then it's just pretty basic controls for reeling it in. Overall, I wanted to really like this game, but the horrible controls and how long matches can take if you lose them is annoying in my book. Also, God forbid you drop the fish on the way back to the drop point. You will have to redo this whole entire thing. Fishing Masters is probably my favorite game on the Wii for fishing. It has you joining your grandpa to fish around the regions of Japan, giving you quite a few options to pick from for characters. You even get to pick a pet for the game, those being dog or bigger dog. Once we make it inside the house, I get huge Pokemon Channel vibes. The whole living room setting really hits the same vibe as that game does. We're even fishing in the Kanto area, so coincidence? I think not. When it comes to fishing, it's another look around and swing your Wii remote while holding B to cast and spin the nunchuck to reel in. It's basically the same as the last game we just played. My biggest issue with this game, however, is how quick every fish will trigger your line break meter. But as long as you don't reel in when it hits this part, your line will never break. But it happens so often that you'll start to feel like you're at a self checkout at Walmart playing this. Then there's this mechanic I really do like where you swing your Wii remote to the side to stun the fish, giving you a few seconds to reel in without any worry of the line break meter going off. This is when I learned you can reel in the fish by holding C, and this ends up being way faster to do. Combine this with the stun flick and you can make any fish easy to catch. Then this game somehow got a sequel and instead of it just being Japan, we're now going all over the world. Fishing Master World Tour makes a Final Fantasy anime approach with the characters looking like Kingdom Hearts rejects. The same as before, pick your angler to start, and hey, Grandpa's even back. This is supposed to be you from the first game by the way, but as you can see, uh, the canon story doesn't add up here. The sequel also improves on the pets you can pick from, as it's now not just dog and bigger dog, you now have a cat as well. They also serve a better reason for having them, as they can find random items or bait for you while fishing. My cat can even do a backflip for no reason, but I like it. Now, I do really love this version, but also dislike stuff about it. Mostly, a lot of the new additions feel like fluff and nothing actually to make the game play better, like the email system just seems like a waste of time habit. The line tension meter seems way worse, as anytime your line falls near escape, it can sometimes be impossible to get it out of there even if you're reeling. Many times I would be reeling and still lose the fish. You no longer have to hold B to cast, but I also feel there's not much difference in power when it comes to casting, as many times I could swing as hard as I could, and then I would get the same results that matched if I just swung the weir mote not as hard. Some errors also have really bad and visible walls. They also added these rainbow fishes that are just key items you have to catch disguised as fishes. It's still basically go get the fish. Now I know this is probably coming off as negative but I still think this game is quite good and if anything it's the second best fishing game on the Wii. 
I love some of the different fishing modes I got to try, like this one where you're fishing on a speeding boat letting fish chase your line. That variety is what I feel would make this game a lot better to play in the long run. It's also pretty cool when you catch a fish and it has that weird trippy area to display them. I like that. It reminds me of Earthbound Battle Backgrounds. This was Fishing Masters World Tour, a fun fishing game having you explore many unique areas of the world. Next up, we're going to hit a few more classic fishing games, one of them actually being developed by the creator of Earthbound. First one is Bakucho Retrieve Master for the Game Boy Color. If you have a Super Game Boy player laying around, you can play it with color and you get this cool little background. Personally, the game looks really cute with this nice anime aesthetic. There's just something about 90s anime that hits hard. The actual maps and worlds are very detailed for a Game Boy game. You also have the girl joining you from the intro and she'll follow you around in the overworld. As for the fishing itself, it looks neat, but no one knows what is going on and I sure don't either. The coolest thing about the game is the fact you can get into the debug mode for it and see everything the game has to offer, so that's something at least. I'll say this right now, the game is purely only in Japanese, so keep that in mind if this looks interesting to you. The next game is Shiga Sato Ito's number one bass fishing, and the commercials for this game is great. I love how wacky it is for a bass fishing game, and the Nintendo 64 version is actually the definitive edition as it originally had some older versions on the SNES. As for Shiga Sato's involvement, he helped write for it and you also play as him in the game. Now personally, I'm just now playing Earthbound for the first time, but to see he got to work on other stuff and still bring his wacky ideas is really cool. This game has a lot more than just fishing as the environment is a full-fledged world you can explore and it does the camera that Shimu 3 does when you are trying to catch a fish. You can even run into these cool talking animal friends that make you feel quite welcomed. Now personally for me, I love the graphics, but I can't say that there's many clashing art styles here that somehow still work for the game. While you and the talking animals are more anime inspired, the world and fish try to get a more realistic approach. Again, it's off, but in a good way. I mean, the original version had straight up real humans in it, so I don't think it's that far off. One of the coolest parts about this game is that Nintendo made an official fishing rod controller for the N64 that was specifically designed for this game. The fishing is fun and relaxing. I'm pretty sure having the fishing rod controller would have made this so much better. And hey, there's no motion controls in sight, which thank god. I would highly recommend picking this game up if you can, as anything with a wacky earthbound feel is worth checking out. Big Ol' Bass Fisherman Bait 2 is the weirdest fishing game I played for the PS1. While it has a normal bass fishing tournament that everyone should be aware of, I'm here for different reasons. Before we get into those, this game looks quite good for a PS1 title, and it does the camera view of you and the lore at the same time. The biggest issue sadly for this game is that it plays pretty bad, and it makes me feel like I'm at a Walmart self-checkout just like the other game because of the tension meter. The announcer also never stops talking, and if you get anything that's not a bass, he gets upset. Now the part that made me want to talk about this game is the World Monster Fishing Mode, which you can catch a Patriarch Bass that looks like an American flag and even a T-Rex. This mode is crazy and I love it for that. This is literally the only reason why I want to talk about this game. Other than that, it's a pretty bare bones bass fishing game. Now these next two games I found from another YouTuber called Sandvale, and these two games are Space Fisherman and Kokoto's Fishing Master. I was going to talk about the two games, but then I learned he had a fishing video of his own, and so I decided that I would just go ahead and shout his video out to you all to check out as there's a good amount of games that I didn't even cover here that he did. Like a game about a killer bass or a game that can't even be completed, plus the two games I mentioned here. If this sounds interesting, I recommend checking his stuff out as he was also a big help at getting footage of the AR fishing and the 3DS Street Pass fishing. And he also recommended me Space Fisherman. I think there was two other people that also did, but he was the first one too. So why not give him the credit when he's already done a video on it? Maybe one day I'll do a deep dive into Space Fisherman, but for now, I got other games to toss my rod at. Now, we're finally down to the last five fishing games, and these are going to be more modern titles, so let's cover the only one on the PS4 that we have. Final Fantasy XV is one of the most divided games I hear from Final Fantasy fans who either say it's one of the worst or it's slightly better than FF13. Personally, they're all wrong because the game is the best in the series and it's also my favorite, so deal with it. Well, one of the most underutilized things in Final Fantasy XV is the fishing minigame you can do with Noctis having you go out and find a spot and just fish for whatever you can find. It even had a whole level system just for fishing if you chose to try doing it. Well somehow, this whole mechanic was interesting enough to get its own video game for VR. Monsters of the Deep is the only Final Fantasy fishing game that I know of as you get to hang out with Noctis and the boys as you're able to fish. This game also has a sonar that makes it easier to find fishes underwater, which a lot of games really need something like this big time. I never tried this out because I never had a PSVR with everything included, but I don't feel like I'm missing much. 
it's interesting to see Noctis interact with you, and while I don't think this is worth it, even though I love Noctis as a character, maybe to someone out there it is, because maybe you get to like hold his hand near the end, I don't know. The main goal is to fish enough fishes to then fight a boss. This is the Monsters of the Deep aspect for the game, and the first boss you use a whole crossbow to take him out, and it's pretty cool. I kinda like this, but I don't think I would ever recommend getting a PSVR just for this, but if you have one, then maybe it's worth to pick it up, especially since Noctis will call you his fishing buddy. Now this is a thing I never thought I would ever buy, but after finding it for $15, I couldn't pass up the deal to buy Nintendo Labo. As there's a full-fledged fishing game in there, so you know I had to do it. I built this whole thing, and once it was finally done, I can easily say that I really liked the Nintendo Labo. I think for $80 when this was released, this was outrageous, but there's something so cool about seeing how this cardboard will all come together. They do a real good job at making you feel like you're actually using a fishing rod for the actual game, because the fishing dock area has this rope that connects to the fishing rod, and it gives this optical illusion of the actual string being part of your string in the game. Now for the fishing controls, it's quite simple and fun. Just reel it down, wait till something bites, and then flick it up, and then reel it. It's pretty interesting the variety of fishes you can catch, from the sunfish to a shark. Personally, in the recording, I wasn't doing the best setup to play this, so I kept breaking my line. You can go to a variety of depths with the deeper you go, having more of the rare fishes hiding down below. Another cool feature is the fact that whatever you catch can be stored into the aquarium to view them whenever you want. This is probably the most gimmicky fishing game, but I find it more intriguing to show it off. I do feel like if you did pull this out, you could easily get someone to want to try it out for a few minutes with you. It's decent enough for what it is. The next game is another real fishing game. This time, it's the Road Trip Adventure. This is a visual novel slash fishing game. If you didn't notice, the UI for the text box looks pretty similar to another game, and when the anime characters come on screen, it hit me. They copied Persona. This game is trying so hard to be a Persona fishing game, and while the idea could be interesting, these are the most boring characters I've ever seen. The only thing I guess you could say that matters about the characters is the leveling up system they have. Kind of like how you can level up their crafting or their cooking. There's just a bunch of stuff you can level up. Now when it comes to the actual fishing, the art style compared to the anime part is such a big difference, so it got me thinking. I really do think that this was going to be a normal fishing game from the start, until Persona started to get popular, causing them to go, how do we make a game like that? And when they realized it would cost actual money to make a game on the level of Persona, they made it the cheapest way possible by throwing in anime sections with the real life fishing parts. As for the fishing controls, it's pretty simplistic, just throw the hook out and wait for a bite. The casting range on your pole is pitiful as it takes only a few reel ins to get it back. Once you catch a fish, it's the same song and dance of don't break the line and reel it in. Well since there's a story, why don't we go over what the plot is. Our cast of characters go to an art museum and find a giant painting of a fish. This guy talks to them and says he knows the artist that they would want to meet him. These kids decide to do it and drive out to the middle of nowhere to meet this random artist that they didn't even know who he was until now. Somehow this wasn't a trap, but the artist all along was the guy from before. He tells you how he saw it once and never again, but maybe it's still out there. Now we're tasked with going to a bunch of ponds, lakes, and rivers to get fishes over certain sizes. That's the whole game. I got all the way to the ocean, but my emulator was screwing up and the water wasn't even there anymore, so that's where I ended it. I'm sure the ending was amazing and had a lot of charm, but that's just something I won't be seeing here. Fishing Star World Tour has been a game I've always wanted to try since the character you play reminds me heavily of Pokemon. The eyes and face are what sells that to me. I didn't get this game sooner since the $30 price tag made me feel like it wasn't worth it. That being said, at the time of this video, the game was on sale for less than 20 so maybe after I'm done talking about this game, you can decide if that's worth it to you or not. The game starts off with a tutorial of her welcoming us. This is Nami, and she's a fishing master. She teaches us the controls as you move your target around to then cast by pressing the A button. You can even see the silhouettes of fishes to kind of know where you need to cast out at. When a fish bites, you gotta hold the A button down to hook it. And while reeling in, a giant blue ring will randomly appear, and you're trying to push him into the middle to have him jump out to bring him closer to you. The game says you can trigger this, but it always seemed like it was luck to me. Then you have this ghost rod that will appear, and you need to line up your rod with it, and this feels random when it happens as well. After that, you gotta pull it to the blue circle while avoiding breaking the line with the tension gauge. Once the fish reaches the blue circle, you catch it as it jumps into the air. You can even use your Labo fishing rod for a minigame it has, but it seems just like the normal fishing from the trailer. The hub area is really cute having Nami doing these poses for each mini choice you select, and this game features a lot of content. 40 fishing locations, 70 different types of fishing gear, and a whopping 180 kinds of fish to catch. 
Now, as much as the presentation of the game and the amount of content seems enticing, this sadly has a huge problem that made this game not worth it to me. You see, when you're out fishing, your goal is to catch certain fishes, and some rod combinations can only get certain ones. The game does show you which rods get which fishes, so you're not just guessing, and you're able to change a rod while fishing at any time. So that's not really the issue. The issue is you can't see what you're catching when you throw it out meaning it can take a long time of trial and error in guessing where the fish you need is. It's also a slap in the face when there's multiple types of that fish in the water, but they don't count towards what you need to catch. I was enjoying this a lot till I got to this point where I needed to find a clownfish, but I was finding every type of clownfish besides the regular clownfish. I spent a lot of time trying to guess where it spawned until I just gave up. It just killed my interest because I was just stuck here from progressing till I just so happened to throw it in the right area and had it bite, which never happened. The shadows also are only good at dictating size and not what type of fish it can be. I just don't have all day to look for one fish just so I can progress and have this happen again. By all means, I don't think this game is bad and I really do think it's probably one of the better fishing games on the Switch. It's just with this, this is an issue that I have and it's probably an issue that you may never even see as an issue. That being said, the game is downright gorgeous and does play very well. It's why I can say for a $20 price tag right now since it is on sale like I said, this game is definitely worth it, even if I do have that little problem with it. The last game on our list was originally a Japan exclusive game in arcades and Switch, that game being Ace Angler. You play it on the cabinet with up to four players controlling fishing rod controllers trying to catch giant fish while shocking them to bring them back in. While somehow I didn't know till this video but Ace Angler finally came to America with Ace Angler Fishing Spirits, this game had some drama upon release because the characters you play as look like they're from Animal Crossing. I like the look, but yeah, you can't tell me that's not Animal Crossing. They have a whole character build at the start and more customizations in the shop, meaning you can easily make your dream fisherman or fisher lady. Technically, the game doesn't stop you from wearing anything, whether it would be for male or female, as there's not even a gender selection at the start. Once we make our character, we're teleported to this aquatic park with all these attractions we can try, but before we do, we're greeted by two mascot fishes. This is Nasher and Jack. They introduce us to the game and tell us how shocking the fishes in the game before feels nice and the fishes love it. These guys enjoyed being shocked so much that it made them able to talk. I, I don't think shocking the fishes is safe then, but apparently they love it a lot. I think the game is lying to me. We get told to go visit the aquarium and this is when we learn our main goal is to get around 200 fishes to save the aquarium. And we do this by the gachapon machine that will give us random fishes. You are given a free rare one at the start as it's always a great white shark. Still probably the best fish they could have gave us. You can get fishes by spending gold coins you earn or completing tasks to get fishing passes. I would refrain from using all your coins as the coins are needed for one of the game modes, but you know what they say, all gamblers stop before winning big. So bet it all! If you do find yourself low on fishing passes or coins, there's a roulette wheel you can spin outside and this gives you a few fishing passes or 100 coins. Sometimes coins are just outside on the ground, so pick those up if you see them. It's time to cover the attractions. For buying this game, you get Ace Angler Plus, which is the first game released in arcades with some more additions added. Then there's Legends of the Poison Sea, this is the game story mode. If you're a fan of coin pushers, Shark Fever is the next attraction and it's a full-fledged coin pusher game you can play that gets pretty addicting really fast. Ace Angler Party is the game's minigame collection with lots to pick from. Finally is the online mode to challenge other players who have the game. I never tested if this worked or not or if anyone was even online. I think, for now, let's tackle the story mode first. The story starts off with this cutscene explaining that the deep blue sea is now being poisoned causing marine life to start mutating. That's it. That's the whole story. It's basically making fishes huge or turning them evil. You end up finding two scientists wondering who can catch this giant fish, you being the ace angler, do it just fine. One thing I like about this game is you're given two goals to achieve. First one is clearing the stage while the second is usually a timed task with catching a certain number of fishes before the time runs out. Usually doing the second goal rewards you with fishing passes. This is when I learned just how hard the second challenge can be. You see, since this was an arcade game, you were dealing with arcade RNG sometimes, as these games were designed to milk you out of your money. Meaning sometimes you can have a fish so close to being caught, and if the game decides no at any point, you're not going to get it. It makes it feel like it doesn't really matter what you do, since the RNG is going to be what decides if you get it or not. Because you can do the exact same thing and will always get different results. The RNG part is here in the story mode, but luckily the money part isn't, so you can keep trying without wasting any of your coins. What's cool is after you beat these levels, you're sometimes shown real life pictures of fishes and get told neat facts about them. In all honesty, this game teaches you a lot about these fishes. 
You can talk to the mascot fishes and they will give you quiz questions about fishes and reward you for getting it right. But don't worry, if you get it wrong, you can just keep guessing until you get it right. There's just a lot of neat details like how the anglerfish has a male fish attached to her since when anglerfish is mate, the male basically forms into her just constantly releasing sperm. So yes, that fish is actively being impregnated right now on screen. Uh, do with that as you will. Just these details like that I love and it's nice I know some of the questions while the ones I don't end up giving me new ways to learn. The game story has you going through each stage completing the objective till you get to the boss area. It's where you fight an evil version of the fishes like an anglerfish or the evil great white. This just has you catching them till the time runs out. It's pretty easy to win with persistence. You can deal an ultra shock by getting the trash that appears in the stages but even if you waste your ultra shock you can still lose the fish. Overall, the story is just a reason to play the game more, but it's pretty tacked on. It's time to waste our coins in Shark Fever. It's a coin pusher game where you throw coins and have the coins try to knock other coins down. If you get the coins to fall into the red part, a roulette will happen, and this will give random events like dropping shark orbs to gain a shark minigame where you catch a shark for coins, or you can drop these star orbs that earn you max thunders to use against the shark. This mode is used for getting coins, but more often than not, I'll come away with 100 or 200 more coins than I went in with, so there's way better ways to earn coins for less of the cost. But it's a neat gimmicky mode for those who want it. Ace Angler Party is the last mode that isn't just the online mode, it's a game mode with a series of mini games, and then there's a few different modes you can try, like battle mode. It's a mode where you and three other friends can play together. Mini game mode, which is free mode, Tour mode, which is a tournament with random mini games, and Master Challenge, which is mini game mode with difficulties. Tour mode comes with three different courses to play through, but they just affect the length of the game itself. You ride a boat to these markers and then play a random mini game like this one, where you run from a shark on a jet ski. They also have classic target shooting if you're into that, and then they have this one where you fish up tuna on a speedboat. My favorite mini game here is Gator Panic. It's this old arcade game that they used to make where it was a whack-a-mole kind of style game. And this sucks because I used to know a Mr. Gaddy's that had this machine and I wish I would have recorded some footage for it. You however don't get the same feel here as you would with a real machine. The best version of this though is the one included in the Namco remix for the Wii. Once you completed the minigame you get granted a rod and a chance to reel in a special fish. Do this till the winner is decided at the end of the game. Now the best thing about this game that I saved for last is after you buy a bunch of fish you unlock a full-fledged aquarium to visit which somehow can hold the giant evil Megalodon and a giant isopod. What's cool is that a few days ago a new update was added for free with new fishes to catch and apparently this game is partnering with a bunch of real aquariums so it's nice to see that this game is still being supported and not left for dead. This is why I love this game and why I feel this is the best fishing game I played out of all of them. And that's it. That's the insane world of fishing games and still so many other games I could have covered but I think this has been long enough. I think now it's time to put everything I learned to the test. I can't sit here and say I'm a master fisherman if I haven't tackled the one challenge every fisherman must do once in their life, and that's fishing in real life. And to do this, I have to make some travel plans. So let's get traveling. Here we are at Bass Pro Shop, the place for real hunters and fishermen like myself. As you can see, I'm really excited to be here. This is probably one of the biggest Bass Pro Shops I've seen and Toyota really out here with the bass in the truck. Right off the bat, this place is filled with deer antlers and other taxidermy creatures. This place is a country boy's wet dream. One of the things I've always heard about Bass Pro Shop was the fact they have an indoor aquarium and so we check it out. And like the one at Corpus, there's a lot of fish with no thoughts and head empty. Oh, that's uh... Hello! <laughs> so 
Yeah, we can do that though. Whoa, whoa, he's got that. I like this little section back here with all the fishes on the wall, giving you a good idea of the size of these sea creatures. I think that's the best thing about the taxidermies here. You get a better idea of the size and how easily you would get destroyed trying to take these guys on. Even if at one point these were a real living animal, their sacrifice wasn't in vain as they can now be a part of my YouTube channel, making their death worth it. Yeah. That's uh, one of the ones I caught in, um, in one of the fishing games. I caught him a few times. After messing around on the first floor, it's time to head up to the second floor, and the view from here is amazing. I was able to find this hunting area with the wall full of guns you can buy. It's probably weird to my viewers who aren't from here to see walls of guns like this, but this is America, so. That's how you know when we're in America, boys. Overall, we came here to get a hat and a foam protective case for having it on the water, so I say it was a good day being here. We even found these dumb sandals that I wanted badly but couldn't fit them properly on my big ass feet. I'll buy them for you. I will literally buy What are them these? For you. Sandals? This sandal. Well, now that we have everything, it's time to get ready for our fishing trip tomorrow. So it's like 5 a.m. and I just had to wake up because I'm going over there now, which is the two hour drive. Boy, this fishing really takes some fucking work. about San Antonio. Also, I guess I'm fucking sick, but I also wake up with like a nasal in my fucking nose or whatever every day. Um, maybe there's some health problems with that, I don't know. But if there's only thing I can say about San Antonio, it is very dead during like early hours to the point that like, usually this area is always fucking busy. There's nobody ever out um, during this time, so. That's the cool part about San Antonio at night. Um, Anytime past three, nobody's out. There's no traffic. Like this is a, a good example. Um, this is usually a very, very busy intersection. And like, you got two cars there, two cars there, and then one car by, by me. And that's a highway over there with those cars that are coming. And it's starting to pick up now because it's 528, around six, it does get a little more people out. But like four or three, there's nobody fucking here. It's crazy. 
Uh, maybe if I ever get time before I make this video, I'll show you how it is when it's actually like busy here, so. So I try to stop at Circle K because they actually have decent um, gas like station food, which is like not saying much compared to other gas station food. It's basically saying that their food doesn't make me vomit when I eat it, but it still gives me diarrhea, so. Um, but yeah, I try to stop here. Only if I ever need like actual emergency, like let's get some food and get the fuck out kind of thing. But yeah. Circle K is cool. They have a really cool mascot. If I can find a picture of it, I'll post it. So yeah. So now that we're on our way off to Edna, Texas, it's going to be about a two-hour dirty med drive. Usually it can sometimes be a little shorter. It depends on traffic and stuff getting out of San Antonio. A uh, good thing about this is there's not much traffic out during this time, but it does get a little bad around 7 and 8. Other than that, pretty, pretty chill drive. I'll go ahead and have a little bit of like shots that I got during driving. So we're coming up on the most glorified fucking gas station in Texas to the point that this is not just a gas station, this is a lifestyle for some people and there's actually a family who went to all the gas stations of this in Texas. Um, but it's coming up here and I was going to at first not stop because I was like let me just get to where I need to go. And I decided that this is the right lane to Shut up! Exit Shut up! Onto US Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! I decided that this was a Texas moment for you guys. So I'm going to show you a Beaver gas station known as. There it is. It's the Beaver Bucket. Beaver Bucket gas station. There he is, it's the man himself. So yeah, I don't know why, but it's such a big thing for Texas people and their Buckies to the point that they're building another larger Buckies than this one, and this one's a pretty large one. So apparently the one that they're building right now is supposed to be the biggest Buckies of all time. Um, so cool, I guess. But yeah, it's a glorified gas station. Um, that's all it is. People really love it though. They have their own merchandise. They have their mascot, which is the beaver guy you saw there. Uh, there's advertisements out the ass everywhere you drive for these places. It's crazy. They even make you food here. You can buy like barbecue, like pork sandwiches or whatever. All kinds of stuff is here. It's basically a, a glorified gas station slash almost a Walmart. Um, here's some shots of this place though. So. Bucky's Beavers. Pretty cool.
don't know what it is with Texas and like their chicken plates and like chicken statues, but like this is very common. You'll see this a lot in a lot of these little like, like out of nowhere towns or like stores. This right here is like very common also like Texas memorabilia. Like I, I've known people, like I know it's probably like, who would unironically buy this? I've known people that would decorate their whole house and just Texas merchandise and get Texas tattoos. Also dog pillow. Well, this one's probably one of the more bigger Bucky's out of all of them that I've seen. Southern Andrew collection, fucking <laughs> It's fun time. Oh, it's time, I'm fine. Everything is fine, Southern Attitude. Salty to the bone. Okay. Yeah, this is probably one of the bigger Bucky's. I <sighs> kind of like this shirt. <laughs> For itself? Dude, man, seventy dollars for a Garfield shirt? It's four XL. Not gonna lie, those I have to lay these shirts. Yeah, as I was saying, it's probably one of the bigger Bucky's. Um, I've seen a few of them that are pretty small. This is probably one of the larger ones, and I would actually make an argument with this one. Uh, this one could be considered a supermarket because of how big it is, but. I still stand very strong that this place is basically a uh, glorified gas station. I'm going back to Bucky's. That is, a lot. <laughs> that is that is like ghetto SpongeBob. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. All right, guys, well, say goodbye to Bucky's. We're leaving. Hopefully you enjoyed your time at Bucky's. I know, so sad, we're gonna miss the beaver. Uh, we're gonna miss the glorified gas yeah, station beaver. So, all right, well, let's get back on the road. Here we are in Yoakum, Texas, and the only reason why I know that we're here is because there's a bridge that comes up, and it's the only small town that has a bridge like this. It's a pretty bad speed trap, though. A lot of these small towns do it. Um, the reason why it's a bad speed trap is because it basically makes you go straight down, and you go too fast if you're not, you know, paying attention to it, and they're usually always waiting at the bottom of the bridge. Uh, Gonzales, which is where the Bucky's was at, is a lot worse. I've been tailgated there before and then pulled over by police officers, but, you know, they're just doing their job. Thank God, I guess. But that's about it. Other than that, enjoy the rest of the little montage.
And after two hours and 30 minutes of driving, we finally made it to Edna, Texas, which is where I grew up at. And boy, is it kind of changed, I guess. We have some more stores. Um, that's about it. So good job on them for fucking up. So the first thing we did when we got here was go to my stepbrother's house because I need to go ahead and get my fishing license because I do not want to get caught by a game warden trying to fish because it is a hefty fine in Texas here. Um, if you don't know what HEB is, HEB is basically Walmart, but for Texas people, uh, we really love our HEBs. Honestly, I think HEB is actually really cool. Um, you can buy live fish from there. Um, you can all buy all kinds of stuff. They have like their own little meat markets. They have their own bakeries. They even have their own brand of stuff you can buy. And it's not really like Great Value Walmart brand. It's actually still really good. They even make their own sodas. It's pretty crazy. Um, however, this HEB is quite small, so it really doesn't have that much versus like the one over here. But they're different everywhere you go. Now fishing certified to catch a Goliath grouper. And hopefully an endangered whale shark so we can kill it for the thumbnail. They won't even show us killing it. We'll just use it for the thumbnail and make sure it's even bigger of a waste. And he said, we're gonna kill two of them so we can get two good shots. We decided to stop at Sonic for some drinks and usually there's always this lady that would be here just screaming outside of her car because she was um, not mentally well. Um, I guess she's no longer here anymore, so hopefully she got the help she needed, but usually she was always here. So that's just small town stuff for you. So the really cool thing about these small town gas stations is they usually sell bait. It's pretty expensive, but they sell it. Unlike in San Antonio, where if I walk into a gas station and ask for bait, they're probably not gonna have it. But they sell worms here, shrimp, and even little fishes. However, they were out of worms, so we just got shrimp and fishes. Since we had some time to kill, we decided to go to the family house and show off my fishing fit and show my dad that I'm a real fisherman because apparently when I told James I wanted to go fishing, he doubted that I was going to do it. So here I am to prove him wrong. Hey dad, what do you think of my fishing fit? What do you think of my fishing fit, dad? Well, you look good. I'm a real fisherman now. I don't know about that. I've been training. I've been playing nothing but fishing games for months. Yes, it is. I've been non-stop fishing, Dad. Well, you got everything on there for it. So. What do you think? Am I ready to catch a Goliath grouper? Yeah. I don't want to feed the Goliath grouper to your child. No. We're going to feed it a live Goliath grouper. Are you really going fishing? Yeah, and we're going to use this cat as bait for a Goliath grouper. Mm -hmm. going to use you as bait for a Goliath grouper. We have found the Goliath grouper. This is a fat fucking dog. Don't worry, young child. We'll come back with the Goliath grouper and you'll be fed for a month. Maybe, in a ma we, maybe even a Mako shark if we're lucky. I think that's funny that you wanted to be on my video while I'm here now. And where the fuck are you at, buddy? Where are you at? <laughs> where are you at? 
after all that's said and done, we decided to head back because we have to get all our stuff together to go fish. So here's the the boat we're going to be using. It's a it's a 14 foot Bombo boat. It's also Texas, so you know. Is that an address? No. Okay, <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't want to have to blur that out. It's a 14 foot Bombo boat. And this is the man the man who owns it who who was taken. So sorry ladies. But this man owns a boat and he ain't he ain't fishing for no bitches. We're fishing for Goliath groupers. He's actually single. And he's ready to get some bitches. Give us your best selling point to get bitches. Uh FBG fuck bitches give money. There you go. And he fishes, so there that's already the three S. Fishing, fucking, and fishing that's going to catch me a whale shark because I want to go ahead and slice it when I get it on the beach even though whale sharks are very endangered and I'll get a felony charge <laughs> but I think slicing the whale shark would be good for the for the thumbnail and then we could feed the whale shark to the poor that looks like it'll catch a, a goliath grouper and a whale shark together maybe a little frog lord I think I used a frog lure in one of the games and would not catch fucking anything. <laughs> so I was like, this is the dumbest fucking lure. It would not catch shit. This is all for uh, fresh water. So. Are we going to catch a sturgeon? Yeah. Are there plenty of sturgeons in Lake Texana? Is this the, it's one of the biggest sturgeon population? The fucking breeding grounds? Yeah. The legendary fishing rod. I should have brought my Nintendo Labo fishing rod. The made of the one that's made out of fucking cardboard. I'll do the flipping trick where you go like it's called flipping. D. Thomas taught me that one. 1989, I think he won a fishing tournament. And he was like a top angler. Do you know who Sean Grisby is or Grisby? You remind me of him. He told me all the time. He was like, "You're not fishy. Your bait's not wet." He fucking said that constantly. And then when I caught a catfish, he told me that's not what we're fucking looking for. We're looking for bass. Repeat that for the video. What's the tip? The fish tip. When from you're fishing, fishing games, you can never ever bring just one pole. If you bring one pole when you're fishing, you are not a fisherman. Well, in all my fishing games, I've only ever brought one pole, and as soon as my line broke, I just had to turn the game off. So I didn't know how to fucking redo it. So that's that's good words to live by. Now now we won't have to just leave. Have you ever lost a fucking fishing rod in the water? Like, it ever, has it ever been like yanked by a fish out of your hands? No, oh, and I will swim for any one of my poles. Cannot believe that he just did that all by himself. He just kicked this with his knee and he was able to launch that into place. How has this man not caught 20 Goliath groupers? What do you have to say about that? Catching, you're the world record holder for the most Goliath groupers caught with a single net, 20 of them to be exact and he caught him in a pond. How did you even do that? They don't even live in ponds. Time and experience. Make make one up, we'll just lie. They'll never know. What's the scariest event with the Goliath grouper? Uh, I got one right. And is, they're so big and strong. They're, they're Goliath, they almost, yeah. They almost flipped my boat. I, I believe that. Me. The Goliath grouper is, is known to be 30 feet long. My boat is only so it, it obviously was gonna flip it. It was. I think we sold it. They'll, they'll never fucking know we just lied. That you heard it here first, folk. 30 foot Goliath grouper guy caught it and he didn't even sweat. Not one he even He even punched it to show it who's boss, show that humans are still top predators. Not even a Goliath grouper is 30 feet long can stop him. After getting everything set up, it is now time to head off and do our fishing trip. So the first place we're going to be going to is Lake Texana, which is near Brackenridge, and we're going to be freshwater fishing on this little boat that he has. So let's go ahead and go there now.
this is where this man told me Goliath groupers live. He said they live in this pond, right? I mean, this lake actually. Also, fuck you, dude. Lake Tixin is real. I don't know why you guys told me I was lying. This is a real damn lake. Everyone told me I was lying. So, eat shit. So this boat also has 10,000 horsepower. And what we're hoping for is we go fast enough that we'll hit the fish. We won't actually have to do any catching. Also, um, since you guys saw us in the North Bass Pro Shop, I got this little water case. So I should be able to actually put my phone on the water and film. But I don't think we'll see anything because the water's fucking murky as shit. But, but it's something. Goliath grouper time? Okay. Yeah, I used to always come to this park here and I never really came over to this area, but this lake is actually quite massive for what it is to the point that it goes from here all the way to Ganado. When I was younger, I used to always drive by the one near Ganado, so it's nice to see it from another angle because I actually didn't even know it actually went out this far. But here's James, he's getting the rod set up and we're about to set sail pretty soon. He's been elusive for 20 years. They only have like maybe 15 years of life, but still, this is an elusive one at 30 feet, so he doesn't really follow the normal Goliath group of rules. There he is. Man's about to pull the boat in and drop it off in the water. He's been doing this for 20 years. He's been boat dropping for 20 years. Hopefully he doesn't fuck up because then it's gonna be a real, real abrupt ending to this fishing trip. <laughs> these smaller trailers too, like these are fucking way harder to, to actually navigate than like big fucking trailers are. Man, it's coming with a boat. He said he don't stop for nobody, that he's going fast as fuck. Now that's a speed boat. My <laughs> fucking pussy okay.
Yeah. Bring it. That's the trick to getting Goliath Piper, you gotta hit him in the head with this shit. And whoever tightens him, the fucking match retires. Now, if there's one thing fishing games do not prepare you for, is how hot fishing in the summer is. To the point, fucking was just sweating out my ass being out here. But, I want to say even with me being all sweaty and stuff, I really had a lot of fun just being out here. To the point we were out here for about two hours, and it didn't feel like two hours. We only did catch one fish, which you'll see later in the video. But hey, the fact of just being out here, I really do get why people fish. It is so just beautiful and tranquil even though we're surrounded by brown water and i promise you that's not shit water it's just how texas water in late snow oceans usually look because the sand can't set properly and other other reasons maybe well in corpus there is shit but that's besides the point um but yeah overall this was probably the most fun i had just fishing and just being out here and getting to just forget everything which is what i really think fishing games and fishing in real life do a good job at showing you just taking the time to just be in the moment instead of you know worrying about everything else around you you get to be here and worry about if you can catch a fish or not and embarrass yourself on a youtube video we're out here fishing boys tell them how you tell them how you show you how you be kind Okay. Also, it kind of sucks that I did buy this thing to try to get underwater shots, um, but I forgot that, you know, Texas lakes are just brown and murky. But it also did benefit because it was so hot to the point my phone was overheating just by being out of my pocket. To the point that majority of the time when it would start overheating, I would just chunk that shit into the water and hold it there. And then pull it out and be just fine. So I guess it kind of worked out, you know, in the end. So we got this catfish. But now he's stuck in the fucking net. But if you want to see something cool, guys, listen, catfish actually make fucking sounds pretty cool oh you motherfucker you stop making sounds <laughs> you fucking stop it's pretty nice catfish though now i do already have a video about catfish facts but i guess i'm gonna go ahead and you know spouse with those here again but another cool thing about catfish is they actually have a protection thing in their fin where they have little spikes and these are for to protect them from if you were to grab them and try to squeeze them from the top or if a predator tried to eat them, the spine would actually sting you. It's not going to kill you if it stings you, but it does fucking hurt like a bitch. That's why if you're wondering why he's grabbing it from the mouth area, like he's like strangling it, it's because we're trying to avoid not getting stung by that. Since this is your first time, give it a little kiss. You gotta stop. That motherfucker's gonna bite me, dude. Uh, I'm too scared. He's gonna fucking bite. Yeah, no, he won't. Yeah, right down top of the head, Tank. Look at that. I'm just, fucking catfish is scared the fuck out of me. Get that motherfucker out of here. There we go. Now we're gonna have good luck for the rest of the day. Jesus fuck. <laughs> uh, well, look at that. Looks like I caught a fish. It's definitely alive. Not the bait that we were using. It's definitely a fish I caught in this lake. So everyone can shut up and not say I'm bad at fishing. Well, after being out here for about two hours, we decided it was time to head back home. So we went ahead, pulled the anchor up, and started to get ready to leave. 
Uh, the catfish was the only thing we caught, by the way. We caught nothing else. That's not good. Okay, it's like, oh, fuck. Well, I can't say it without a doubt. All my practice with those video games, I think added up just fine to real fishing. I think it's a lot easier to have to real fish than it is those video games. So there you go. We're gonna go fishing on the ocean tonight. So see you guys then. Look at those arms, he's doing it. He meant to do this. He meant to put put it there so he could move it with his hands because he thinks it looks cooler. He meant to do this. It definitely wasn't the fact that it just is so fucking hard to do that. He just meant to do this so he could look cool. As the evening struck, it's time to go saltwater fishing. And we're gonna be heading up to Point Comfort where this little pier's there. It's next to this plant that you'll see. It's actually kind of pretty, even though the plant is basically releasing toxic fumes into the atmosphere, but it's okay, it looks pretty. Gus is also now joining us from the previous clip of me asking him where he's at, because he's been asking me to be a part of the, one of my videos, and I was finally here, and he wasn't here for the morning, but he said he would join us for the evening fishing. Even though he doesn't have a license, he's not going to fish. Um, he didn't want to break the rules, but he's going to be there for moral support, if anything. And here we are. This is the little area that we're gonna fish at on this little pier over here. Also, we forgot to put the bait in any freezer or anything like that, so now it smells like little garbage to the point it's been apparently sitting out in the sun for almost five hours. So you'll see me gag a few times whenever I open it because it smelled really, really fucking bad. But there's Gus, um, he's with us now. That's not even a fucking fish. I don't believe that's a fish. I'll wait up for a second. That's horrible. Can you touch me? I'm like, I did the trick. You got $2,000 on it? Oh, no. I'm wrong. I'll do it for $2,000. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the Blake has learned today. I taught him how to bait a hook this morning. <laughs> now let's see if you can do it. Explain what you're doing. Gotta put it right there between the black part. Stick it out. And just stick it right back in like that. That's to get it really stuck on there. Alright. Very safe you have a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Blake TV. <laughs> Like when he's getting a little bit. He just smells so bad. He has learned something. What's wrong, Blake? <laughs> he was wrong. He doesn't smell bad. You dealing with the food? Smells like fucking Skittles and rainbows. Jesus. <laughs> Tastes like booty hole and asshole. <laughs> that is the fucking fish. <laughs> we both just get up. <laughs> That's not the goal for today. <laughs> Holy shit. He's fucking.
lagi Barbie. Alright, one finger, but this right here. One finger, for real, this time. You gotta flip this. Let's see it, let's see it. Oh, I can't wait to watch this video. About this. About what? This. What's this? This. What about this? This. What do you think about this? Look at this. What do you think about it? About what? About this. Oh, oh, this? Yeah, this. I'll tell you what I think about this. This, I'm gonna go out there about this. That's all right now. Well, with our saltwater fishing coming to a close and our whole fishing trip at the end, we caught one catfish and nothing else. Also, I want to say sorry about the wind. There's nothing I could do about that. It just was really windy that day. It actually made, honestly, fishing there unbearable because of how windy it was. But, I mean, it's better than being hot as shit. My final thoughts on this whole fishing trip and all the fishing games I played. I really do think that a lot of fishing games get a lot of hate because they're too complicated. Which some of them are. But if you real life fish, it's quite complicated and a lot more complicated than these video games. Other than that, I want to thank everybody who helped me find all these videos for these fishing games, even ideas for what games to play. And I want to thank um, James and Gus for going out and fishing with me. So thank you guys for watching and hopefully I never have to play another fucking fishing game ever again.